Hello, hello, this is Franz Cantor here, cartoonist, illustrator, and Toon Talker. I'm back here. And uh, what are we doing today? We're doing another we're doing another fez today, so I just thought uh, I would <laughs> get into the into the right sort of uh, mood. I don't have a fez by the way, if anyone asks. But anyway, uh, we're gonna do the guy that sort of started off this fez craze for me or this interest in fez. Um, Matt Smith, who is the 11th Doctor, and I really enjoyed uh, his work as the Doctor. Um, I was a big uh, fan of uh, Mr. Tennant, of course, the 10th Doctor, but uh, I thought Matt did a really good uh, job. And of course, uh, Karen Galan as uh, Amy Pond uh, was a very interesting um, companion. So um, I can't show you the reference material for uh, what I'm working on because I've got my iPad here. Um, so I'm just going to explain a few things. Um, he started wearing uh, a fez and his only reason was like, why are you wearing a fez? And he just said, well, fez is a cool, you know, so <laughs> that was it. Uh, that's the only explanation you get. And, it, and it, it gave him a sort of a, I don't know, this sort of a librarian sort of uh, look, you know, this sort of old worldy um, uh, philosopher. And uh, it was really interesting. So um, anyway, apart from that, we'll, we'll talk more a little bit more about his uh, stories and things um, in a sec. Um, so the shape that I've opted for here is this sort of lovely kidney shape or bean shape almost uh, or could be a peanut shape almost I guess something very simple and um, uh, attainable I think in terms of you know pushing and pulling because this the stresses and strains on the face are quite profound no um, it's a way of creating some form of an interesting puzzle that I can sort of then solve in the drawing process because in a caricature you employ two things well for me anyway one is exaggeration the other is simplification and those things you're using in 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 concert with each other so um, simplifying the difficult like faces people find hands and faces quite difficult to draw so um, a way of simplifying that is to attack them as or pretend that they're simple shapes. So what's the outline look like? Does it remind you of something? Does the face remind you of a kidney bean? Well, kidney beans are easy to draw, right? So let's draw a kidney bean and then try to get some of the details into that simplified uh, form. So the other thing I need to uh, discuss because we're working on tone paper is uh, we're going to be using uh, brown white and black pencils and these two are, are very soft they're um uh prisma colors so they're quite soft to uh to use yeah and i use a, a, a robotic um sharpener for these because it tends to the old-fashioned um pencil sharpeners tend to break these because they're quite soft this is a polychromo the black so that's quite hardy it's not as soft so that will be pressing quite we can press quite hard with this can't press very hard with these okay because they're soft they'll break um, what else is there we're going to be probably using um, a zinc um, brush pen where all the ink is in the handle and you just press it and it comes out to the to the to the nut to the br bristles also probably got to use a Posca marker they have got several Posca markers here they're um, acrylic markers. They have a little ball bearing in it that you shape to mix the paint. And um, one's a brush brush version. We've got thicker ones as well, black and white. That just basically help with the contrast levels of uh, this drawing that we're going to be doing. Which is, in a way, it's looking at um, uh, utilizing um, the seven elements of art, like you know, line and, and shape and form and tone and uh, texture, color, and um, space. So um, all of these things combined, we're going to be uh, playing with. 
All right, so the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, it's quite the reference that I've got is quite well lit. It's uh, like an outdoor shot, I think. But um, the shadows are going to be probably uh, more uh, towards the left hand side of the form. And uh, that will make more sense to us as we move forward, I think. We just sort of get an idea of where things are in this world, this little window that we're making. We're using also a framing device, which I like to use to give the uh, three-dimensional pop-out effect, right? <laughs> it's always fun. All right, so I've taken the liberty of taking this thumbnail sketch and just sort of clean it up a little bit and uh, start work on the, um, on the tone paper, just get a head start. It's only about, I don't know, a minute, two minutes work just to sort of reposition things, change things a little bit. Uh, from the um, from the thumbnail, but basically use the thumbnail as my as my guide because that's the shape that I want. All right, so um, that's that's where we're going. So let's let's um, let's proceed. Let's go ahead. I'm going to bring the laptop a little bit closer so I can see uh, where it is, where I'm going. I've got my my glasses on, so off we go. So um, I uh, sort of been an, I've been an, not a regular watcher of Doctor Who. I have missed a lot of Doctors. Um, I was a big fan of William Hartnell, of course, uh, when I first saw him. Not so much of uh, Patrick Troughton, although I do admire him uh, as a Doctor and an actor. I love his work. Um, I was a big fan of John Pertwee. Big, big fan, and even his son um, in uh, Gotham, I think he's, he played uh, Alfred, and uh, he was really good. Um, what else? There's uh, the other doctors are kind of, um, eh, you know, uh, take or leave, and then of course you've got the David Tennant, which is uh, the tenth Doctor, and uh, he was exceptional. Was really good. Of course, you've got you know silly things in there like flying Daleks and stuff but um, I think he's uh, you know he afforded himself very well and he's kind of everybody kind of everyone likes him as a, as a doctor um, I was quite partial to uh, <laughs> although I probably shouldn't say this uh, I was quite partial to um, Peter Cushing as a doctor but you never say that to uh, out loud <laughs> I quite I liked his performance I thought he was good uh, I was a bit, I remember seeing it in the cinema and I, 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 uh, I was a bit sort of um, peeved. I liked him, but I was peeved that they didn't use William Hartnell because it's exactly the same story arcs and everything. And, you know, it would have been good to use some of those. Uh, and even like some of the actors, uh, Sheriff of Nottingham, for example, if you've seen the William Hartnell one, you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, they're really good. You know, it was really excellent, uh, the uh, Pertwee, John Pertwee, he was smashing as a doctor. It's, you know, serious and funny uh, in equal measure. Really enjoyed his performance. He was fantastic. Um, really loved his stuff. And uh, um, Joe, the, uh, the, the companion, um, you know, good teamwork, good uh, stories, dramatic nice music dramatic music and you know it's really good stuff to see uh, it's been going for such a long time and hasn't run out of steam so as you'd expect because like you know Rick and Morty you know you have time and space so you can actually literally be anywhere it's bigger than the time tunnel time tunnel only puts you in um, time not I don't think it put you in well, it did put you in space yeah, I remember that, but not out outer space. So it was a, a different sort of thing, you know. You have to. I guess you got to be there to like it. Not not many people. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, but what do I know? <sighs> so I just thought, you know, why fezzes? For God's sake, why fezzes? I just like it. It started with him. He just mentioned he put a fez on. He said, fezes are cool. And he started wearing them. And that was it. And then I thought, well, you know what? That's right. 
they are pretty cool. They're they're awesome, you know. Apart from the the sort of connotation, not connotation, but the uh, feeling that people um, get from looking at them, they kind of sort of like an you know old men, old old gentlemen's club, old ex explorers club, or something like that. Um, of course, uh, you know. The first one I did was uh, in the drawing, this drawing series was, of course, um, Peter Lurie. And he, you know, in, in um, Casablanca, although he had a short scene in that because he was killed, um, he wore a fez. And, you know, he looked good in it. And from that, they, they, it, 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 it took, in the world of cartoons, because I love cartoons, um, I obviously grew up watching Hanna-Barbera and um, one of the Peter Lorre characters in Hanna-Barbera films was uh, Hanna-Barbera series was uh, um, Morocco Mole Morocco Mole okay so and he had a Peter Lorre voice which was uh, awesome and a fez so you know he was uh, it, it was a, it was a homage I think to to Peter Lorre from um, from Casablanca. Uh, I thought that was really nice. You know what? I'm going to get rid of that highlight. Um, you got to be careful how much uh, pencil work you cover with the brown pencil because it tends not so much with the black, but it tends to color the pe the white uh, pencil when you're working over it. So you're just trying to sort of create a sculptural effect of the the drawing, which you know, it just adds another uh, dimension to to the to the problem. Adds another dimension to the process here. Um, you know, I think it makes it more fun um, thinking about forms and stuff like that. You know, you always uh, bring out the uh, the heavy artillery here. You always think about the structure of the head, um, even though you're exaggerating and using a lot of uh, your cartoon aesthetics. Um, simplifying and uh, and um, creating your own sort of visual narrative um, it's always good to have in mind um, structure underneath you know certainly for um, uh, uh, certain accents here and there you can't really do very much with the cheekbones because he has quite uh, they are sort of um, he is smiling so what happens is um, with the I'll show you with the other model over the uh, cheekbones, you have a series of uh, muscles which pull and push. So the effect is the face itself is an incredibly articulate machine. And it's articulate not for survival so much. We do have, you know, things that animals have like these muscles that, that uh, open and contract, um, mouth muscles for eating. All of this stuff seems to be incredibly um, complex and even though structurally it's similar to like an ape or a dog or something like that or cat, structurally they are. But you know, the usage of these and the uh, articulation is quite profound. So you know, there isn't an animal like a human being um, that we've been able to find, you know. Um, jokes aside about uh, uh, seagulls, you know, with without eyebrows, but you know, <laughs> this, uh, the, the expressive qualities, the, the visual communicative pro properties of the face is quite profound, quite profound. So, given that it's quite complex, I don't want to scare you off it. Um, attacking this complexity with a simple shape, a simple premise, and then building details inside it is the process that's that's all, that's what i i've i've followed for a long time and uh that way you you don't get flummoxed you don't get sort of um put off by you know a lot of work ahead uh i know it's hard work drawing um can be hard work a analyzing you know uh things photographs or life life drawing you know, but it's always good to, um, excuse me, it's always good to uh, start with a, a simple steps. 
and uh, just progress. I'm just going to um, blow up my reference a little bit so I can get a, a clearer understanding of the rest of the face. Good. I need to get a, it's a very, quite a blurry photograph. I can't show you that, but uh, I got to try to guess uh, a lot of the um, features here. Luckily, um, I'm using uh, my knowledge of anatomy. I have a, uh, a small knowledge of anatomy, which uh, I'm trying to accommodate in the, the, in the belief that I, I think adding details that are true in um, their intention, I guess, uh, you know, whether or not you, you change perspective, you change a lot of things. Well, perspective, you change a lot too. Um, but you, you do change a lot of the um, proportions. Um, we'll, we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk, actually we'll talk about that, uh, we'll talk about that now. Um, this is what I'm talking about here. This is what you call the, what I call the, like the mask area. Uh, some cartoonists, uh, caricaturists uh, think of the mask area just as the eyes, but I'm thinking of it more, less, less of the Green Lantern, more like Mexican luchador masks right so this whole area the, the mouth and the nose and the eyes so that whole area keep an eye on because that's where the likeness is going to come from and the recognition factor right and also uh those uh, those are areas which have to work in 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 some form of symbiotic relationship they've got to uh relate to one another so lines you start with uh you know, with an, with uh, the, down the nose, for example, continue up from the eye, and then you know the nose ends in a point in the cheek, and that continues on and refers to the line of the mouth. So these are sort of a a, a continuous uh, rhythm of uh, lines and shapes, and they represent forms. Okay. So understanding a little bit about perspective so that you know that the head is tilting to a three-quarter view. And those are things that uh, uh, apply to all of the elements. Okay, so keeping everything within the, the, the I guess, the relative uh, truth of, um, of, the, uh, of the reference is good. But also tempering that uh, reference with, you know, some level of understanding of the properties that you're drawing. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm just drawing uh, form. I'm just having a little bit of, uh, I'm putting a little bit darker pencil lines here and there, but, you know, mainly I'm more interested in the form. So the, just pushing, pulling the form, pushing the form, sorry, back into space. Um, given that the grey paper meets me about halfway, so it's, that's good. I don't have a lot of uh, form shading to accommodate and to draw in, right? I can concentrate on a little bit of form and then mainly the light with the white pencil and the dark, the, sh the darker areas with the black pencil. So I'm just getting a few elements uh, which I think are relevant here and there. That might work. Okay, let's go over. There's a line here. There's a lot of shadows here. So I'm looking back and forth to the reference to try to find you know, where I can attack next, what area to go to next. And, um, you know, just taking, taking the time to look, not rushing. I'm not doing, I'm not rushing this. Um, I'm not under any deadline as such. I am enjoying the process of analysis and keeping it all relevant, trying to keep it relevant. So, 
you know, these are lines that refer to the perspective, right? So somewhere in this warped features, your, um, your lines of perspective, because the head's tilted away from us, so any horizontal lines would be pointing to a vanishing point on an horizon. Okay, so thinking about that, it's not going to be perfect, but just thinking about that makes you uh, attempt to line things up and give it a, a certain um, a degree of truth and believability. We come back to truth all the time. It just says, you know, what does that actually mean in a drawing? Well, it just means that you're, you're, you're not, um, you're trying to sort of tell a story that has some basis in in reality. So that means anatomy, a realistic approach, lighting, shading, form, a realistic approach. Um, you know, but uh, you're also employing a lot of uh, exaggeration as well. So you're moving the goalposts. They're in play, balls in play, but the goalposts are moving around the field. Um, so catch up. <laughs> All right. A little bit of form happening there. I'm quite happy with the uh, shadows and things. And I just keep playing and uh, hopefully uh, something will um, eventuate. Of course, there's no guarantees here. I might uh, not get the likeness or I might mess it up somehow, you know, but that's all part of the game, isn't it? Um, don't, you know, we never, well, we do, but we shouldn't uh, put pressure on ourselves to perform. We're not, we're not cameras. Um, you know, we have a lot, there's a lot of things going on with these, uh, withdrawing. Um, that uh, we need to think about and focus on. So it's not always about the likeness. It's about, you know, structure. It's about the learning process itself. So every time you pick up a pencil, you're solving problems constantly about, uh, you know, light and shade, form, anatomy, perspective. Um, and all of these things, irrespective of the subject matter, are uh, part of your uh, process that you you consider. So here we go. Amy Pond was a great character. Really enjoyed her work. Um, Karen Gillan. Um, I did a, a caricature, caricature of uh, Karen uh, for an exhibition when I moved down to Melbourne. That was fun. And. Um, I might draw her again, actually, but, but we're, we're just doing the feathers today. Uh, I've been meaning to do Stimp, um, Ren Hoek, sorry, from the Ren and Stimpy show, because I thought he's a great character, but, you know, might be uh, like, because uh, he's a cartoon, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I draw him or not? He is definitely part of the Fez Brigade. I love that um, Fez he, he wore in quite a few episodes. Of course, he was channeling um, um, Peter Laurie as well. And uh, and Stimpy, in many ways, was sort of like a um, a Sydney Green Street from, um, not from Casablanca, but more from um, Maltese Falcon, where at the end of Maltese Falcon, um, um, Green, um, Peter Laurie uh, yells at Peter Green Street, uh, City Green Street, you know, in a way that reminds me a lot of um, Ren, you know, yelling at Stimpy. So proportions you start to push with. Things you see a relationship with in the features, like uh, things that are close together or feel like they're close together, maybe it's something it's telling you, push them closer, even closer in the drawing. So that exaggeration process has a, uh, has a formative uh, 
um, inclination. It's part of the uh, analysis and response to the uh, to the stimuli. No, to the um, the drawing process is is a very uh, um, it can be very analytical. Um, depends on you know your take on it. Uh, it could be just fun. It should always be fun, actually, because, you know, what the hell? What are we here for? Uh, especially, you know, doing these uh, live drawings are uh, really for it's therapy. You're, <laughs> you, you should send me a bill. Um, this is therapy. This is for me. It's, at least it's therapy. Um, a very good friend of mine years ago took up uh, painting and he said... Um, I find it really relaxing and I said you find painting relaxing you're in the you know, doing it wrong because uh, it's you know this was, I was joking um, but you know it was uh, it was like um, it's up to you really you, you the, the, what I was I guess what I was in intimating was that there's a lot of process involved and uh, you know things to think about while you're drawing but that shouldn't be a tense thing you know fear of failure or anything like that that shouldn't be part of it you should just want to um, experiment and see you know what what could happen what could happen and really you know um, any any mistakes so-called are really you know areas that you can sort of benefit from because you think about it if you don't make any mistakes you'll you'll never know how to proceed it's like um, you know uh, you need to to walk into the quicksand occasionally and uh, get your feet wet and say right well it's not that direction I'll walk over here but if you got it right the first time you know, you wouldn't um, you wouldn't really appreciate that. So um, I really enjoyed uh, Matt Smith's doctor. I was sad to see him go, for sure. Um, you know, but. Uh, yeah, he was good. I thought that the ending of uh, Amy Pond was very sad. But very poignant as well, because there's a, there's a sort of a bittersweet quality to, um, to Doctor Who, you know, because he has to say goodbye. He regenerates, but he has to say goodbye to, to um, companions all the time. There's always like a, a, you know, with uh, any doctor, there's an anticipation on, on, you know, how are the great villains, the Cybermen, and of course the Daleks, how are they going to factor into the stories? Because everyone's kind of waiting for them to happen. That's, you know, and every time they come, there's a like, I, re I remember seeing the last, the latest one. Um, the Dalek, you know, the slimy creature inside the machine was really moving, very scary. Um, so I thought that's that's very interesting, you know, the way that they keep adding to the mythology or to the prophet or the story, the narrative of the of the characters, the villains. Um, you know, it, they build, they get they get more and more dangerous you know uh, it's like the stories of the um, the stone angels the, the crying women you know um, from tenants doctor in um, Smith's doctor it was they were much worse you know very very scary So, 
I'm trying not to outline a lot of this stuff. I, I want to sort of keep it uh, contained as much as I can um, by the form, you know, and just sort of put black in just to help the form a little bit and uh, obviously outline a few things, a few elements, just to have them delineate or stand out from from the background or from other elements. I kind of like this sharp sharp points combined with round uh, shapes. I think it makes it uh, the drawing a little bit more interesting for me. This is fun. Putting in a few details which are not really in the picture, but We'll see how, don't overdo them of course, keep everything proportionate in terms of its um, depth and visit and importance, I think, relevance. Before I do that, um, I might just finish this part. So this is the area I'm focusing a lot of attention on, so obviously you know, I am putting in the black now to kick up a lot of the form, make it into a little bit sharper, sharper detail. Start usually start with um, the pupils, and then you know, if the irises are darker, then they may require an outline. Um, a lot of times they don't. You know, look at things relatively. Don't uh, cut corners. So one of the things to remember, of course, is the whites of the eyes are not white. Um, you have to keep everything a according to a uh, realistic um, level. So, you know, don't, don't cut corners. Don't sort of assume because it's called the white of the eye that it should be white. It's not. Of course, if it's all white, then you can't show shine on it. Shine only works by having, you know, a, a value to work up, to work against, to shine, to, the white only works against a value that's not white. So a lesser value, darker value. So of course the eyes, because they're under the, the brows, have a shaded property. They don't glow. So don't do that. Stop it. He's got a great uh, face. He's really um, very warm and friendly and not very serious, you know. Um, even with the serious stories, it's sort of like, he's not as scary as some of Tennant's um, expressions, you know. Um, like when Tennant's scared, it's terrifying because that you know he's like not not scared of him but the seriousness of the situation okay good so continue on I might actually outline this part of the nose, even though it's not uh, so evident in the photograph, in the reference. Um, reason is things that are coming forward in space have a tendency to help be helped by um, a thicker contour line. It just makes it stand out from the face a bit more. The pencil, of course, gives you the ability to be soft and um, clear, hard and soft at the same time with the line work. It's good. I'll help that a little bit with a brush uh, later on because I quite like those uh, contours, the outlines. That's a nice sort of effect, I think. All right, I'm going to lean on this up because I'm getting over to the hair and I'm going to be pressing harder. 
and try to get some tone in there. I might actually hit this with a black brush too. Um, might be worth strengthening some of that uh, those lines. Can't actually remember if he had a tassel on his um, fez, but uh, they usually do, so I put one in. So hair is um, something you you probably get. Um, oh, this is not for the camera. Yeah, let's bring it down a bit. Um, it's probably it's wise to think of it rather than individual hairs as sort of ribbons. So you have more um, unit unity, the groups, tufts of hair. If you think of them as as tufts rather than individual hairs, you can always break that. Um, concept by in, you know having stray hairs here and there but um, it's just a lot easier I think to um, to draw them when they're grouped so you can sort of get an, an idea of uh, of uh, movement that's relative to the properties of the hair and also the fact that, uh, that um, you know, grouping them, it just feels like hair rather than lines, which I guess they're lines, but you know what I mean. I'm trying to sort of get uh, a texture of hair or a feel of hair, a look, of, a look and feel of hair with a pencil. And it's kind of nice. It's sort of... Uh, you know, it, it handles the lines of hair quite well. Get quite long, elegant sort of strokes like that. And then, um, of course, I'm tilting rather than tilting the paper because I can't I'm gonna, I'm gonna tilt the paper. And everyone will get giddy. So yeah, just go in and shade it the way that uh, you know you can see it being shaded in again in tufts in sort of groups. It's a sort of a nice um, it's a nice way of uh, of creating the the uh, a relevant form um, and look at the direction constantly back and forth you know you get a feel for it anyway but um, we it's it's a way of keeping it sort of real or realistic in in, in, in some form so it feels like hair right rather than flat color or flat black or whatever it is that you're using you know if you try to sort of give it more properties that uh, reflect the texture that's what I meant so you're drawing a texture which is um, a lot more fun build up a bit of contrast here and there that'll do all the years have a general shape to ears but um, you know properties they have like this sort of uh, uh, ear like shapes shell like properties a shell a shell like ear a whisper into your shell like ear um, but the 
you know, there's individual, uh, for sure, there's individual um, shapes that uh, change them somewhat. So, ha you know, keeping an eye on the, um, the reference, the photograph of the character, you can get an idea of how particular their ear is. So rather than just draw a generic ear, you know, if you can come up with a caricature of the parts rather than just the face, just the head, you know, if there is some form of, uh, uh, you can get, like you can caricature anything, anything at all. It's just a matter of changing its shape and um, proportions and things, you know. But it has some form of purpose, so, which is, uh, which is good. It all sort of relates back to your interpretation of the subject. And <clears throat> allow yourself pencils you can rub out. Allow yourself room for um, experimentation, I guess. You can see that there. All right, we'll fix that up with it. It'll be less obvious with the brush. Okay, so let's go down the face, move the face up a little bit. Right, here we go. All right. He's got a nice um, smile and I've simplified a lot of the lips to create a single line rather than the showing the upper lip because I think it's it's so thin that we could probably stand to um, not feature it so strongly. Yeah. So I don't want to destroy the relationship between the nose and the mouth by having it touch too much. Um, get too close because then it's sort of a um, you've, you've changed its relationship so it's all about um, balance uh, between you know elements that are working here and there it's a bit of um, muscle pulling over here it's quite a lot of muscles in the face and you know when people like actors especially um, you'll see it uh, with these muscles here that form dimples around his mouth um, they're very strong and you know, we, you can kind of expect uh, an actor's face to have such a lot of um, use and flexibility because of their work you know uh, their chosen field so it's not surprising that they have a lot of um, lines and folds and muscles and things and you know they have a complexity that uh, a lot of people don't have so that forms you know a lot of the expressions and things of course come from their personality or comes sometimes comes from the roles that they play um, you know, I don't expect uh, roles to form particular wrinkles or shapes uh, unless they play it a lot. But uh, you know, certainly there are there is truth in the fact that um, expressions, thoughts, expressions come from thoughts and feelings, and. Um, they are evident in your face, you know, and the more you're ex used to expressing that in your face, like an actor, the more they will show up. Unscripted. Unedited. So when you're, you're happy, everyone knows you're happy. When you're sad, everyone knows you're sad. Something that, um, because of the, the machinery of the face, you know, it's very... Um, sophisticated 
there's a lot of activity, a lot of movement in the, in these in these lines, these muscles, and uh, in that way they kind of leave traces by telltale wrinkles and um, forms that uh, are left over time, much like the um, you know the uh, Grand Canyon being formed by uh, water, by the action of water. It's this, a similar sort of uh, effect. So time creates expressions and, uh, well, if thoughts and feelings create expressions and over time those expressions become um, written into the features. So they become, you know, wrinkles so I've got the black I'm gonna help the black a little bit too with uh, some contrasts here and there but now I'm attempting to put in a bit of uh, uh, shine which uh, just helps to helps the uh, process of um, texture and gives something that I'm not using it to color in, I'm using it to apply a certain level of um, textural qualities which are, um, I think are relevant to this story, this pencil story of the face of Matt Smith. So yeah. So again, you know, helping the contrast here and there. Um, I'm actually painting with, I'm drawing with, drawing with light. So I'm drawing the light in the in the illustration in the in the caricature. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. So whereas I was in the shading part, you're actually drawing with dark, you're drawing with drawing shadows. Now you're drawing the light, how the light plays on the forms and the different areas of shininess. If they're really shiny, of course, you press harder like that. If they're less shiny, um, you know, you just uh, keep it uh, proportionate. Don't overdo it. Don't use it to color in. Don't color in the whole face. Just keep it uh, proportionate. And of course, you know, I'm using a hatch line stroke, which is uh, kind of a um, organic form of um, building tone. So it's a textural approach as well. So that's. So part of it. I'm creating a side light over here, which is, I think, appropriate to give a, a three-dimensional, like a, a, a rim light coming in from the from the left. I wanted to give it some sort of a three-dimensional feeling. So there's more than one light source. You know, when there's one light source, it tends to create a um, a flattening effect especially like this you've got the main light source which is more or less front on so it's you know it's focused uh, on evenly on the on the face so I'm going to build up a little bit of uh, difference here and there if I can um, I've got some other tools which I'll use it makes this uh, process a little bit more convincing in terms of the light so add a bit more you know light to it some more contrasting shapes so just want to hit the bottom of this line with a light the brow a little bit on top it's got this beautiful overhanging brow it's nice 
and go up one more step up the ladder of wrinkles and then one more and then maybe in the center we have uh, let's see if I can do this we have a central spot hot point hot spot of light and then we can vignette that off and that'll give us a very shiny forehead which looks the part okay and now uh, rinse and repeat continue on down the face more you know uh, looking at the lines the um, light in the reference try to keep some relevance to that and you know proportionate don't use the white to color in just keep it under control uh, as much as you can I'll put another rim light on this side uh, because I've got it over here a little bit I'll fix that with a brush make it a bit more stand out a little bit more Sometimes the process you in, invite a little bit of different um, order of creating these um, drawings. You know, it just depends on how you feel. You know, it could be just uh, well, I've got the white, may as well finish type of approach as well. Why not? So there's a lot of pinching in the muscles, the smaller muscles that are around um, the mouth here, which give him a sort of a shy, a shy look, which I think is uh, quite nice. It's got that sort of, you know, how shy children have. It's sort of uh, when you, you know, they have this self-conscious smile um, that's what I meant to say so it's that sort of um, effect really you're intimating you're sort of referring to um, put another okay this is getting a bit scary because we've got the, the lines are getting very narrow so I'll have to definitely get in there with the uh, with a um, Thin Posca. Go over there, and then we've got we've established this now. So probably get a a wider spot over on the chin, like we did up there. Okay. Now this these are lovely pencils. They can um, you know the, you you push them harder, not too hard because they'll break. They're very easy to break. Um, but they're able to go over, it, over it themselves and other pencils quite well. So they're, they're soft. The lead's the uh, color, the lead. The color's soft. So you're able to um, treat it more like a pastel. take a line up there as well um, let's do something here to get back uh, before I do that I might just uh, very carefully reestablish the um, dark of the pupils right because his eyes are green or hazel or something So you can definitely see the pupils. So this is an, a, a brush pen. Um, I'm using quite a fine one. And that looks like it will work from that point of view. I'm going to put a highlight back into that eye 
in a sec, but before I do that, while I've got, while I'm working on these, I'll, I'll outline um, the important contours, the important shapes with a, a thicker brush pen. This is a, a zig. So it's a a brush pen where the ink is forced down into the brush itself from the handle. It's sort of soft, you squish it. And uh, it's a lot better than the old days of using Indian ink. You know? So what I'm doing here is just trying to establish some contrasting dark areas to build up um, a little bit so that the, the, the um, tones, the half tones will be nice and uh, clear uh, in the face. Remember using grey paper as the it's the 50% um, tonal. Oops, 50% tonal. It's meeting halfway. This is nice. I've left a, a light source, like a lunar light, on the side there. You know, again, like thinking about form, like the. the shape of the, the 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 head and the hair and you know the fact that if you if you're getting a light on that side of the head um which is not in the uh reference i'm just putting it in there but it tends to give it a little bit more uh 3d um quality so not outlining everything but of course some things can be very Steady. Oops. This is not the time to sneeze. Right. Um, I've got to go make a long line there, but before I do that, let's make sure that these um, uh, lines under the brow are, in fact, black enough good so the reasons for thick and thin lines is to create a sense of volume roundness um, the thicker lines tend to have a feeling of weight and they stand out from the background quite well. So there's a bunch of reasons for, you know, the lines getting thicker und underneath forms usually because of um, a sense of weight and um, curvature. Um, so there's a whole, there's a, there's, there's a range of reasons. It's not just one convention you know to play with line width there's a bunch of reasons so I've already established the line but I'm just helping um, create a stronger uh, impression Alright, that's uh, looks like it might do the job. Right, so um, where was I? Okay, so we're going to help the white now. We've sort of established a strength strengthen the 
the black, but now we're going to help with the, um, oops, too much, have to fix that. So these are the, like hot spots that you ref you're actually drawing. Um, you're actually drawing uh, wet or reflective areas. So in the skin, you know, skin has different textural properties, and um, depending on the wetness, like lips or uh, round eyes you have well I guess you can have wetness but if you've been crying but they usually that's where oils are and oils of course are they have the reflective reflective properties right okie dokie here we go so this is re uh, referring to the light that I'm intimating is coming in from the left. I have an, also a light coming in from the right. So other than the main light. So just want to be very careful about how much I put in, in terms of um, those, those highlights. So keep them like proportionate and outline everything. You just you because you do it too much, it'll it won't uh, look like skin. It'll look like metal, or glass, or plastic, or something extra extra shiny. So that's not really what you want to do. That's all right. Let's fix this. It's a little reflection, a uh, little hot spot there. And I've got it wrong again. It doesn't look right. So let that dry for a sec. We'll fix it up. These uh, opaque markers are quite uh, handy. They dry quite fast. Okay, now we'll go back and fix this problem we've got. I think what I'll do is I'll get rid of that. The reflection um, it's correct in the reference but in the drawing um, it, it seems to make it look in like wrong and uh, I think it's because you know when the left and the right eye if you do a highlight uh, a hot spot or a reflection it should even though it doesn't it should be in the same spot on the iris that's what it feels like I mean it's never like that in real life but it's somehow in the drawing uh, it just doesn't it just looks weird so you know try to get it in the right position relative to the left eye that's no good Leave it for a moment. Let's see what else we can do. Get more mischief happening here. There's another pump action of brush. And looks like that's dry. I think that's finished. Yeah. Oh well. That one's done. Doesn't matter. I just want that to dry a little bit. 
and then we'll hit it with a white spot. Bingo, there we go, that's it. And now we can continue with the rest of the eye, the lower lid, just the rim of it, just catching a little bit of moisture, the lacrimal, all of these different areas, uh, just help it a little bit. That's cool, I like that. That will do for now. Right, so what we're going to do with the uh, the background, I think I might just do a black background and uh, we might just sort of do that. Let's see what we can use as far as tools are concerned. We've got a thick marker, but we want to cut in first, I think, with a lot of these shapes. So we'll use a thinner version of the black marker. We've got somewhere, here it is. You know it's handy because I'm left. I'm right-handed. Sorry, uh, start over left and work back. Otherwise, you'd be working over um, over wet, slightly wet um, paper. So I'm going to be hitting it with the with the bigger marker, but I just want to outline some of these things. I'm not going right up to the contour line which I've established before. Might be good. To, I can't see through my hand might be good to keep the lines parallel that's a handy thing isn't it It'd be terrible to screw up with a simple mistake which would whoops ooh, careful careful don't get too close to wet um, it'd be terrible to screw up with uh, a simple mistake after everything else seems to be behaving itself so again you know cutting in here is quite a a nice thing i've done this for a long long time because i like the effect of this double contour um, it's very um, respectful of the line the thickness of the line which I've established around the uh, the features around the face so I want to fill in the background to get a sort of a nice negative space uh, happening but at the same time I don't want to destroy the that beautiful thick um, line work So just help the drama out a little bit, you know. It's nice you're using grey paper for for all it's worth. So I use the thick uh, paintbrush, but I'm just doing the architrave <laughs> around the door, around the windows, uh, with a cutting in brush and. Uh, Not the roller yet. Use the roller for the, the in between the walls and stuff. Around the windows and the door and the architrave, you just use the cutting in brush, smaller brush. And that sort of highlights this window effect of the shape that I've created, um, giving it a sense of balance and compositional um, quality of, uh, you know, um, like it's purposeful and has more of a uh, a strong um, graphic element. It's sort of picking out, you know, um, enhancing shapes because it's all at the end of the day. Uh, this is an exercise in in uh, qualities of shape and how you're using shape in a, some some new narrative, some new form of um, of drawing, you're changing the proportions, 
for a sense of mystery and adventure. And that's it. You're just having some fun with this. It's not a, you know, it's not a um, serious pursuit or a serious problem. Well, it can be a serious pursuit. It's not a, a, a you know, a world shattering discovery. It's just mildly entertaining yourself. And every time you do that, you learn about different properties. You're still learning about anatomy, but you're pushing the boundaries a little bit and that kind of makes it more fun. So the learning process should always, you should always employ a sense of fun and games and puzzles and things when you're learning. And this is, this is a way of doing that. So as I said to you, you know, you can caricature any, anything at all. It doesn't have to be people, it could be animals. Um, plants, flowers, because all you're doing at the end of the day is um, exaggeration and simplification. So simplifying things, break them down into simple shapes, doesn't matter whether it's Bugs Bunny or the Hulk in full battle armor, they're all, um, they all should be approached in the same fashion to um, simplify the shape so that you can get um, the sense of um, you what's going on here you can get the sense of uh, the essence or the um, you know the, the workings of the um, of the character that you're drawing now I can't show you this face just take me for granted that it does look like him because um, I didn't load it up but uh, it's my version of him anyway, so. Really, I really enjoyed this uh, drawing, very much so. Um, I've been kind of putting it off in a way. Um, don't know why, just, uh, you know, I guess, you know, you get sort of, um, You get sort of, uh, I don't know, hypnotized by um, the process and uh, um, sometimes you sort of, you know, really can't sort of grab or get, find a, uh, a, a way to start a project. And, you know, the best way to start a project is what I did today, which is to start it, bang, five minutes, into the into the thing and then it's done so you don't have that uh, problem of um, you know being a prima donna and uh, and uh, <laughs> just saying oh it's too hard I won't do that it's too much work it's too hard I want to draw somebody easy let's draw Stimpy no let's draw uh, Matt Smith and um, that's fun you know so Drawing is fun, and um, this is my way of having fun. This is a way I, I, I really uh, enjoy my um, experience of uh, drawing, definitely drawing Matt Smith and the Levitz Doctor. So this is Franz Cantor, this is Matt Smith, and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.